I was born in San Francisco, but I was grew, grew up in Berkeley, California, and I met Rudy up at Lake Tahoe. He saw me on the beach at Lake Tahoe. I was tall and I had long red hair down to here, and he saw me and he said, that's the girl I'm going to have in my arms tonight. Well, he didn't get to do that, but it was shortly afterwards, I went out with him, and I went home and told my mother, I said, there's a guy who stopped me on, on the beach and asked me if I'd go down to Hollywood. And I said, oh no, I couldn't do that. And he said, well, have you been to Hollywood? And I said, oh, yes. I said, many times. He said, well, when you come next time, I want to entertain you. And sure enough, later on, he sure did. <laughs> and we got married. On his show, he had a lot of people who came and he would know whether they were good or whether they weren't. And he knew right away. And so he was able to say yes or say no to them. He was the first one to have a, a radio show like that for 10 years. So it was like a television show. So he had these people on and he interviewed them and had them do whatever that, that, that they did. If they were singers, they got to sing. They would, he would let them do what they wanted to do, which I think is wonderful because he didn't make them do anything. It was what they wanted to do, which is important. He loved to entertain. He entertained right up until the day he died. In our living room up at Pyramid Place, he was entertaining and he'd set up everybody. Said, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on. He'd go down and bring them in. <laughs> he'd bring people up to the house. He just loved to entertain. He only did one musical, the first one. He only did one musical and then he went into comedy. And you always see him with gentlemen, uh, married brunettes. That was with Jane Russell and Jane Crane and Scott Brady. And I was over there and he did that film over in Europe. So that was really fun. And I was in the two with him and it was really a great movie. But most of his movies were of comedy when he took the Penn State glasses. Ooh, 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 really, really? Oh yes, of course, sir, of course. And he was so funny that they kept him in those roles. And he had a beautiful, beautiful big camp back in Maine and uh, where he used to go all the time, a summer camp, where all his boys and all the people from his band, he used to have them all up there and he'd all free vacation and bring all the people they wanted to bring with them, their children or their wives and their wax wives right. <laughs> or their mistresses or whoever they wanted to bring up, they were able to bring up to his beautiful camp in Maine. Well, when he'd go out, because he was, he was the, the leader of the college band, so when he'd go out, he would always use his hands like this to make his joy voice go further because he didn't have a real strong voice. So when he'd do this, he said, oh, so he decided to, that he'd figure out how to do a megaphone. And that's when he, he invented the megaphone. He heard the herd read up. If he didn't like their name, he changed it. And that's how he got his name. Rudy Valley was from Rudy Weedle, the great saxophone player. Because as he said, I was famous when it was during the Depression years. But he was very successful and he made people happy. And I took him back and I had him buried in, uh, in his little hometown.